Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we please stand for the flag salute? Aye. Okay, so Dr. Vali, do you want to go straight into your superintendent's report? So we have a packed agenda, so I will be um, brief. Our school year starts really soon. We are welcoming our new teachers, welcoming in our new teachers in two weeks, and then our entire teaching staff the following week. Students will be in our hallways on the 30th, and we are so excited to begin this school year. In the past few months, we've had a great deal of retirements and resignations. Tonight on our agenda, we have our Director of Special Services. Michelle Gardner will definitely be truly missed. She is such an advocate for children, and we wish her well in her new journey with NJCIE. As a last minute addition, we also have a resignation from Mike Scarra, who is with us this evening. And Mike, I wish you the best of luck in your new position. And in addition, tonight we have James Finley on our agenda. He will be the new principal of Mary Kay McMillan Early Childhood, Childhood Center. It is so exciting to have someone who has been in our midst all this time take on a key administrative role. While we will miss our staff who are leaving us, we welcome our new members with open arms. And now I'll ask the GL senior class representative to come forward and discuss open campus. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all today. My name is Jack Rogowski, and I am the class of 2024's class president. And on behalf of the class, I'd like to ask for the privilege of open campus for our senior year. Now, over the past th three years, the class of 2024 has gained two very vital skills, those being the skills of discipline and responsibility. And overall, these skills are very, very important in any adult life and especially in college life. And open campus allows kids to exercise those skills in a way that that's enjoyable and benefits them. Students have to be able to get themselves to and from school on time and make sure that they don't miss any class. And by doing this, they further grow those skills of discipline and responsibility. Now, of course, students understand that this is a privilege, as I stated before, and not a right. And this can be taken over. This can be taken away at any time due to poor attendance or to breaking school rules. And students will, of course, be respecting these rules in order to keep this privilege that they have. Now, thank you very much. That's all. I, that's all I have to say. If you guys have any questions at all, I'm free to answer them. Do so. any board members have any Do questions? Yes. Yeah. Do the board. Anything I would say would be sarcastic. So, <laughs> thanks for thanks for representing the class. Yes, thank, thank you. you. So, thank you so much, we, Mr. We, Nixon. Do you have anything to add to this? No. Nope. So, do we vote? We vote. You don't vote. I think you just so you just kind I, of say yeah. I believe the board are all in approval. <laughs> so approved. <laughs> yes. Thank you so you're, much for waiting for us. <laughs> we appreciate you apologize it. for being late again. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hello. Okay, I am on. All right, very good. So Mr. Nixon and I are going to present the um, New Jersey graduation proficiency assessment. This is for our current, this will be this next year's senior class, how they performed on the assessment. And I am getting ready. And so I'll turn it over to Mr. Nixon. Thank you, Dr. Varley. Uh, so as Dr. Varley stated, this is going to be an overview of the results from the NJGPA test that our junior class took this past March. Um, this test is the current state graduation proficiency assessment. Um, some interesting points of note here that um, over the uh, recently, the state board uh, decided to change the uh, voted on the cut score. If you remember from last year's, and this is an important piece of information to understand as we get into tonight's presentation, 
the cut score for proficiency on the assessment the prior year was 750 and the cut score was 725 for this year for both ELA and math. Um, individual score reports were sent home to students and their families in July from the district. Um, and you could take a look at the New Jersey Assessments uh, Resource Center website if you want to find some more information regarding state graduation assessments um, and some of the various options that are available to students there. Uh, so first things first, our, here is a representation of our results uh, from our junior class this past year. Um, you can see a nice, uh, nice job by our students, 95% um, proficiency in ELA and 82% proficiency in math. Um, something important to note here, as you take a look at it, you might you might initially see that there's um, there you know is a little bit lower of a proficiency rate in math. But if you were to take a look at the state proficiency rates in both language arts and math, you can see um, our students did a really really nice job on the math profit on the math um, assessment. Um, overall, that's above 49% better than the state average. And in language arts, we also did a very, very nice job at 95% overall proficiency, uh, which is 17% better than the state rate. And taking a look at how these results compare to how our students performed last year, uh, you can see uh, in both language arts and math, our students performed uh, better than they did the previous year in terms of proficiency rate. Um, that said, a couple factors go into this. Uh, the factors that go into this are the change in cut, cut score, like I mentioned, from 750 to 725. Uh, but also going into the second year of this assessment, they found that there were some, um, you know, updates, corrections, changes, things like that that needed to be made to the assessment. Uh, one of the really interesting and odd pieces that came out in last year's analysis is that for some reason across the state, males scored significantly lower than females did in language arts, which which was really, really odd. We looked at 20 representative other school districts um, that we like to compare ourselves to when we're trying to measure how we're doing. And 20 for 20 males were lower than females in ELA last year. So I think they took a look at some of the test questions for bias and some other things like that. The state will continue to move forward and take a look at these results and update their assessments. Um, and I think these results show a combination of a change in cut score, an update in the assessment, and also um, you know, the work that we're doing as a district to digest the information that we get back and update our programs and give our teachers the resources that they need and allow our teachers to do the great work that they do with our students to get these uh, these fantastic results. Um, if you take a look here, this is just a bar graph that, that shows similar information. The, uh, the graphs on top is what's representative of our school district as opposed to the state, which is the, the bar graphs along the bottom. Uh, you can see the green in these represent um, a passing proficiency score, uh, and the red per, uh, represents not passing. So you can see uh, all the way to the left is grade 11 ELA, in the middle is grade 11 math, and to the right is all results summarized together. And again, that's GL's results on top and the state results on the bottom. And taking a look at the differences between males and females overall between the two years, you can see uh, much closer uh, now that the, the test has been adjusted a little bit um, with females uh, passing at a 92% rate and male students passing at an 86% rate. So here is a similar graph that just shows you um, in color what it looks like as far as passing and um, not passing amongst the male and female groups. We um, also, as a requirement by the DOE, we must uh, disaggregate our data based on race. And if you have fewer than 10 students, they do not, in a certain racial category, they do not um, count that score. They, they, don't, they count the scores, but they do not count it in the percentages. So um, our Asian population with a 96%, our Hispanic with 76, and our white um, population with 89. And as you can see, um, the black population was suppressed due to the number of students. That's comparative to last year, as Mr. Nixon stated, 
that um, they made some adjustments to the cut scores and then um, modified some some of the areas to account for bias. So then you can see the same information here, um, just in a bar graph with um, our 96% Asian, our 76% Hispanic, and then our 89% white students. Um, you can also look at our categories. We have free and reduced lunch, 504, special education, ELL, and general education. Again, we have those po two, two of those populations suppressed due to the number of students. And you can see um, in 2022-23, uh, we had a 64% with our free and reduced lunch, our 504 with a whopping 98%, um, special education, 54%. And then our ELL population was suppressed due to the number of students and then our general education at 96% um, passing. One thing I do wanna say, if a student does not pass, they have other pathways to graduate. The SAT, the ACT, there's a portfolio assessment and the ACCUPLACER, correct? Am I using that correctly? So they have other options to pass and graduate. So if you can see here, you can see our, this is in a bar graph with our free and reduced lunch, our section 504, our special ed and our general education students. Now moving on to the WIDA, pop, the WIDA exam, this is the access for ELLs. These are our English language learners that they must score above a 4.5 to be tested out of the English language learner program. As you can see, our zero to two years in district, we had 29 students tested, 14% scored out of the program. And then from years three to four, we had 80% um, score below the 4.5 and 20% rose above and um, are now exited out of the program. What you find, what we found that a lot of these students have already moved, well, not a lot, several of these students have already moved out of the district. But these students who do not meet the 4.5 cut score continue, cut score continue with the ELL services. And now it's time for questions from the board. Yes, I see 29 plus five. So this is more than the 10. In the last page, we didn't have any data. Is this a same population or different? This is, so this is the entire district. This is K to 12. So that one was different. Yeah. So what you see for the NJGPA is just for the junior class. Understood. On the, on the same, I realized that there was a different, I realized that there was a different cutoff, but if you were to look at the data with the same lens, with the same cutoff as it was last year, what is that trend looking like? I know we spoke about this. It's it's a similar, it's, um, do you remember? Um, you, you want the microphone? It, okay. oh. Yeah, if you looked at it with the same cut score, there was still a little bit of that anomaly of how much lower male students scored on the grade 11 ELA. Um, so it, it's kind of hard to say, would take a look at what would the passing rate have been last year if, um, you know, if the cut score would have been 725, it, 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 it would, it would have been sim it, similar, slightly better in math and language arts is just hard to say. So I would say math, math improved slightly when you look at the cut scores. Um, you know, if you made the cut scores the same as last year, ELA, it's hard. The so female students. Those slides for a second. If, can, can we back up yep. to those slides? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which slide would, uh. This one here? Yeah, maybe just this one here. So what I'm trying to figure out is if the threshold was still 750, which I think was for the 2021, 22, right? Got it. Yeah. We were at 55%. Mm -hmm. If the threshold was still 750, how much better would be like, this is a massive jump, but then things have moved just in the evaluation. So I'm curious if you have the raw scores, mm -hmm. if you were to kind of um, do the math <laughs> here would you yeah. would you see 55 going to 75 or would you see 55 going to 60 I'm trying to figure relatively how much have we improved yeah I know yours so I didn't look at it in the direction I looked at it in the other the, not the direction that you asked I looked at it in the, the opposite direction um, so if you took a look if I was to break this apart last year 
and you took a look at the 77% for math, uh, males and females were roughly both about 77%. And when you took a look at ELA, females were also roughly 77%, but males were like 40%. So it, it was it was a really very different number, um, which kind of makes it hard to, to look at it in that direction. Um, we obviously could and we could tell you, but but what we did was if if last year's cut score was moved down to right. 725 is the way we looked at it. And yeah. and math would was similar, slightly better this year. Um, okay. And ELA, it just would have been hard to tell because the, the male score was so low, it would have still been lower. But I don't think it's an apples to apples comparison. Does that make sense? That, that's so I'm I was trying to get to to the apples to apples yeah. and not lowering the score because truly if you want to see the proficiency you would mm -hmm. want to see it at you know at the higher level you would want to see it at the higher level than at the lower so and, uh, yeah, I, ha this, I have it i just don't i don't, this, I don't have it now but we get the number it gets broken out the numbers of and so it scored one through five so you have you know how many the percentage of fives fours threes and you know threes fours and fives are what's considered proficient ones and twos are not last year it was only fours and fives that were considered proficient so um maybe that's something we can include in the future is is the breakdown of one twos threes fours and fives mm -hmm. well so i was just saying that um this is the state made this decision right because they said that this this evaluation wasn't appropriate at 750. So it's not like we did something wrong by not looking at that number, right? Like correct. This yeah. is the state saying that we need to change this number because it wasn't right and the biases were in there. So correct. they had to relook at the whenever test. there's a new assessment. Um, yeah. especially you know, last year was the first year of this assessment. There's always a review, there's always adjustments, there's always discussions. It's part of the reason why um last year's graduating class wasn't held accountable for the graduation proficiency right. assessment, um, you know, to meet a certain number in order to, you know, qualify for graduation because it was year one of the test and they understood there would have to be, um, you know, an evaluation of, of how was the test? Was the test fair? Were the questions good? Did we have the right cut score? So over the course of a couple of years, they worked to try and get it to the right so place. So you're getting to my next question because we know that students struggle to care about these tests. However, this test, does kind of count. So yeah. students do care about this and they work very hard at it, as you can see from our scores. Do you think there is, um, last year, because they knew they weren't going to be held accountable, do you think that that also maybe played a little part in that as well? It's always possible. Yeah. It's always possible. And, you know, and when you have smart students, they, 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 they know where they stand yeah. <laughs> with a lot of things as well. And, you know, our students take uh, certain assessments, you know, starting their freshman year, they have the opportunity to take the PSAT. They take that in ninth, 10th and 11th grade. And, you know, there, there was a point in time where over 75% of our students in language arts and math had already met a graduation proficiency by November of their freshman year. Right. They know exactly where they stand. Um, but you know, what, what we did this year, along with Mr. Finley and Mrs. Bartlett, um, we met with all of our student groups prior to the tests that they had to take. And we, we do the best we can to make sure they are aware of what this means for them, not only for a, a graduation proficiency um, and the, the ability to graduate and, and meet, you know, meet that requirement, but we want them to understand what the test means for their district and for their school as well. Um, and the importance of that, you know, it, when colleges take a look at different school districts next to each other, what makes your transcript look better next to somebody else's transcript? And uh, we did the best we can to try and make sure that students understood that, you know, not only was, you know, this assessment important for them in graduation, and even if you've already met your graduation proficiency, there's a lot of value in doing the best that you can on this test, on top of the fact that you're taking it, do the best you can on everything you can do all the time anyway. Yeah, it's 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 important. So, you know, we we, we had class meetings, um, you know, prior to testing to go over all of those different items with the students. And um, we hope they understood the message. We think they did. Rob, do, do you need to pass ELA and math separately? Because obviously the scores vary or is it is it what we're looking at is just the aggregate and that's that's passing both separately. So okay. and one of the things that we do with this information and and we spent you know, a lot of time, you know, taking a lot of this information, but all of the information and and creating spreadsheets that we have a grade level through a spreadsheet. Mr. Finley is excellent with spreadsheets. If you ever have any questions on that, give him a call at Mary Kay. And <laughs> I know I'm going to. Um, and, and still have his email, so we're good. 
and and what we're able to do is we 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 take a look at every score that students have and we we lay that all over the top of each other and and we see which which are their alternate pathways uh what students have never demonstrated proficiency on any of the assessments they've ever taken and uh we went ahead and we redesigned the way we implement our math and language arts strategies program for this year as opposed to having it be a class that's within their schedule it's going to be um some a class that's in a teacher's schedule but it's going to take place over half of a lunch once every rotation um, so this way it's not part of their transcript it's but rather it's it's an extra support half hour once every four days um you know with 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 excellent teachers and and what that's going to be designed to do over the course of the first semester any seniors that didn't meet a pathway yet or demonstrate proficiency yet that we need to get there they're going to be working with one of those teachers working on developing their portfolio but also preparing to retest with the psat in october um, and then also to prepare for the accuplacer which is also one of the alternate pathways and then the junior students um we took a look at how they did on the njsla as freshmen the year prior um, and we identified the students that didn't meet a proficiency based upon the NJSLA, but also we didn't try and use that test as a one-off. We took a look at how they did on the PSAT as freshmen. We take a look at the grades they got in class also, and we kind of identified a cohort of math and language arts students that, uh, and for ninth and 10th grade, that we're going to offer that same program to for semester number two. So we're going to target juniors and seniors for semester one with the hopes of preparing the juniors for the NJGPA, which will happen in March, and for seniors to meet um, um, a graduation requirement, which is kind of on a rolling basis for them. Um, and then ultimately prepare, uh, you know, the freshmen and sophomores to take, the freshmen to take the NJSLA uh, later on in May, and then the, the sophomores to start developing some of those core skills that they need so that they can hit the ground running and be successful their junior year. So we're trying to use the data, uh, see what the data tells us and, and address those specific proficiencies directly. Smart. Thank you. So, Mr. Nixon, just to be clear, this is taken by all our 11th graders. This is mandatory. Yes. And I think you just answered my other question about what steps are we taking to help those who haven't met proficiency yet? You did a good explanation on that. And then the third thing I have is, is the state still going to be looking at that gender bias? I would, I would imagine so, although uh, on this year's assessment, the gender bias didn't you know, appear to be uh, similar to what it was the previous year. But my, I think my expectation would be that every single year, the test should be taken, uh, the state should be taking a look at the results um, on every level, taking a look at it in terms of gender, taking a look at it in terms of race, taking a look at it from, from every aspect that they can to make sure that they have the uh, most fair and equitable assessment that they can. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other board members have any more questions? No. All right. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Nixon, for all your help with this. Very good job. Thank you, and Mr. Nixon. For our junior class, I think we have 18 National Merit Scholars coming up this year. Is that right? For our incoming seniors? Is it 18? Very proud of this group of students. Proud of all of our students, but very proud of this group. And I will turn it over to Ms. Rees. Yep. Okay. So um, thank you, Mr. Nixon. So, yes, um, Mrs. Reese, uh, Patricia Reese is the New Jersey School Boards Association representative. And we talked quite a while ago about putting together some board goals. And uh, she has agreed to come and help us um, establish them. But when I spoke to her this week, we, we had a couple of conversations and we met and discussed. We, she, just, she suggested that the best way to do this would be to divide into two sessions. Uh, tonight, she would would be to look at this evaluation that we all did, the board self evaluation, um, the working board self evaluation, and look at that. And maybe we could look at some of the areas where we didn't do so well. That you have some suggestions on what we can do better. And then the next one, we're going to put together a meeting where she will come and she will talk to us about actually setting the goals and talking us through the process of actually putting goals together. So I will let you go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Thank you. As Mrs. Penna said, when we talked earlier this week, I I saw your agenda and, and that you have a rather full agenda. So in, I'm sorry. Oh, sit, step closer to the mic. Oh, all right. 
I, I mean, I could hear that it was r r out there, but thank you. <laughs> I can't hear what's out there. Um, and um, so in recognition of your full agenda, um, we thought that tonight would just be better to, to for me to help explain the board self-evaluation and help you process that and lay the groundwork um, to get your thoughts moving towards what kinds of board goals you would like to um, have for the upcoming year. Um, and so this is going to be a short presentation. I don't have a copy of this, and I apologize for each of you. I can email it to you. Uh, when they printed it today, they printed the wrong charts. Uh, so I didn't want, want to give it out with the wrong charts. This The, the presentation has the right I, charts. I can email that to you um, to, uh, tomorrow. So board goals are the foundation of um, improved governance. Uh, they provide or an, have an avenue for uh, effective communication and um, accountability. Thank you. There are um, several categories that a district can have for goals. Tonight, we're really going to focus on the board goals, which is the highlighted or the bolded version um, se sentence there. And the board goals are set to improve the processes that are owned by the board. Uh, and then you evaluate them in conjunction with your um, board self-evaluation on a yearly basis. So these are only regarding board processes, not district. Do you have district goals, uh, which um, your superintendent updates you on periodically that the board agrees to as well? These are simply for board processes. So we start with the board self-evaluation. Uh, and this chart, um, which I think you, you have, um, I, I think I handed out the last time, um, but the just to explain what this chart is. The number, the bars in gray are what the board members who completed the self-evaluation, the value that they place on those, um, the, the processes down below. The first five uh, processes are, um, are tasks, task areas, and the last four are relationship areas. So the, the board places a high value on those different tasks and those different uh, things listed below. The dark blue represents how the board as a whole feels th the board is doing in accomplishing those. Um, and, and we generally like to see where they're, or where they're closer, um, but um, that you haven't done this board self-evaluation, you haven't had board goals. So this is a process of starting and moving forward. And this chart shows um, the relationship um, between how the individual feels they are doing and how the individual board member feels the board is doing. Uh, and, and again, anything above a three is really um, considered an effective, uh, an effective uh, functioning board. Uh, so you have several task areas that you might want to think about moving forward. Um, in in establishing a board goal. I will say that we recommend no more than three to four um, board goals a year because any more than that just becomes unmanageable. Um, and three, you know, three is fine anywhere between three and three to four or five. Um, and before I go further, does anybody have any questions if they've had a chance to read the evaluation? Uh, board self-evaluation. If they don't, that's fine. Hopefully this will um, have some pointers on things to look for. I just had a quick one. Uh, thanks, Patty. On the prior slide, can you just clarify it? Are you, are you suggesting that when we get to the point of thinking about goals that we would only take on, you're saying, three or four of these categories or tasks at one time, essentially? Yeah. Yes. Uh, or, or more specifically, something in that category. When you read, okay. um, when you read the evaluation, which is um, 
and the comments uh, in the evaluation, uh, you will see um, things might jump out at you that or will be a task area that you could accomplish. Some things that jumped out at me were communications and board planning. Um, but again, these are your goals. Um, and so it's helpful to read those comments. And I will, um, you. Yeah. So the, the board did get, well, apart from the fact that they actually did the evaluation, they all did get a copy and time to look at it and you know, take a look at it for tonight. So yep. they've had a look. Yep. So when you do the board self-evaluation, uh, you know, the next several slides are talking about um, questions to consider. We're not, I'm not looking to for you to answer these tonight. Uh, these will be um, questions to things to consider as you're looking moving forward to about what kind of goals, what goals you would like to establish. So as you read through your read through the evaluation, again, um, what what was the most interesting observation that was that was contained in the evaluation? Um, are there any strengths uh, that the evaluation did point out uh, uh, you know, for your team, the team being your board of ed? Uh, and then uh, is there one area in the evaluation that you think should become a priority for board development? Again, these are questions to think about as you process through, and then when we, we get back together again, um, hopefully we, you know, you'll have your creative juices going. So are you saying that looking at these, these are what we should be looking at, basing our goals on, sort of asking ourselves these questions? The, the, well, so. the potential. I mean, these are just, they're not the only questions you should look at, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas on how to focus your thoughts towards what you're looking at and, and moving forward with goals. So, Patty, this is the first time that Berkeley Heights has undertaken this uh, board goal evaluation. And getting board goals for us. So Correct. now that we've done the self-evaluation, we've got the data back and we're looking at it now. Our next step before we meet with you is to to dive into those three areas that we possibly want to prioritize this year and come up with goals or will you help us come up with those goals? Well, uh, what I what I'm suggesting is yes, I will help you come up with those goals, but that you individually dive into them and see if there's anything that you see as as a focus area for board goal uh, in moving forward. And then through a discussion and a consensus building, we'll reach uh, and you know, three to four or five goals that you you your board, you board you, you as board members feel would help move um, your board forward. Mm -hmm. and, and since we've never done this before and this is new to us, you looking at this evaluation and obviously there are there any suggestions that you would say, consider based on some of the stuff you've seen that maybe areas we should be potentially looking at? I, I did. Uh, and as I said, I saw communications uh, uh, crop up on several different areas, communications amongst the board, communications between the board and the public, um, community relations, those things came up. And then um, board planning was another one that jumped out at me. As you can see, when I went through it, I, I highlighted and I put uh, um, markers where I thought things um, th that jumped out at me. But what really communications and board planning were, uh, I saw several comments throughout in several of the different task areas um, that might be a potential. And then, and then when we come back again, we'll vote, well, if that's something that, that you agree with um, or whatever you agree with, we'll narrow it down so that's not, you know, it's not an all encompassing. You want something that, that you can, uh, that the board can work toward a task or an action plan that the board, board can work toward to be and be successful at it. So just trying to understand this, would you suggest that the board get together prior to meeting with you to hatch out some ideas of concerns or um, is this it, something you would prefer to do with us you know I'm just trying to figure out what, what would the best way to do this so that we are all sort of aware of where we feel we need to be going right um, it would have to be a public meeting because okay. this is not does not qualify okay. as an executive session discussion okay um, I mean and there's nothing here um, that that 
is confidential of any any sort. It it really is helping the board um, function better, function more collectively and cohesively. And just so we can prepare for it, how much time would you suggest? I know you mentioned last time, but over an hour potentially, um, maybe more, I just to make sure that we have enough time to do no, this. No, I understand. And thoroughly. I would suggest minimally an hour. Okay. Um, and that's if, and that's if everybody starts thinking now and kind of making notes to themselves when we come together. It, it, you know, hopefully there will be some common threads that that several see, and and the the process of it getting to the board goal is a process of by by consensus. Um, so it's not like it's my way. Um, I'm the board leadership. It's my way or no way. Um, the board majority. It's our way or no way. It's it it's really a consensus building operation, which which also helps the board start to function or not sort continue to function well as a team. Patty, are these goals yearly goals, like from September to September, or are they long-term um, yearly goals, more than yearly goals? They can be both. You can have a, a, a an overarching goal that may take a year or two to accomplish, um, or it could be something, um, or it's an overarching goal, and then there's parts of it that take a year or two to accomplish, and parts that can be accomplished in a year. And then, Patty, do many school districts in um, our area do this uh, board self-evaluation and make board goals? Many do um, uh, do the board self-evaluation, by no means all. Uh, it, uh, unlike the CSA evaluation, the board self-evaluation is not mandated. It is, however, considered a best practice um, in, for, in, in boardsmanship. I think we're looking for that best practice as a yeah. board. Yes. And just to clarify, you said no more than about three or four. Sorry. I would say no three, three. three, three to five tops. Okay. I mean, you can certainly do three. It's, um, I mean, if you can only come up with two, this is your first year doing this. So um, two would be fine as well. Okay. Um, that everybody can agree with. Uh, so it, it's, um, you know, it's your first year doing this, and we want to start with this process this year, reach some goals, and then move forward. Uh, Patty, I'm very grateful for the New Jersey School Board Association for giving us some guidance on this. As a new board member here, this is, uh, I think it's an important thing for us to do to really self-evaluate and look mm -hmm. forward to what we're, what our goals are for our community and our district. So mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I remember when I was a board member um, and, and we did this, it was helpful. It somewhat was sometimes was eye opening based on the comments that that uh, board members read. And when you were go, if you've read through it or when you read through it, you'll notice that you don't know who said what any name in the in the compiled report, any name is removed. You will also notice that there were some um, comments redacted that was done with the advice of your attorney based on the potential that they were evaluative in nature. Um, again, that was done with the advice of your attorney. So, so, you know, again, a starting point, where do you start? Uh, the question is, what can our board do to be more effective in your areas of responsibility, whether that be policy development, oversight, and monitoring, communications? And just a series of essential questions, I, I, and I'm not going to read through all of them in, in, in uh, recognition of the time, but really, what professional development that that you feel as a board would be helpful to you um, in moving forward and improving your governance skills. And that professional development uh, is something that NJSBA does provide. And like coming tonight, it's it's part of your dues. Uh, so there's no additional cost, but it's by no means the only, you, you don't you don't have to use New Jersey School Boards if you have other ways to do that. But as I said, we do provide that service. We do come in and it, it is part of your dues. So I just listed a few examples, well, two slides of examples, um, but, but just to go through a few, uh, establish some of, you know, for board goals, establish goals for each 
specific committee. Review your bylaws to make sure that they reflect um, your, your current practices. Uh, re commit to reducing the distractions and increasing the efficiency of our discussion. Um, you know, communications to all stakeholders. Develop an effective communications plan amongst the board. Uh, for professional development, achieve board, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but uh, achieve board certification through um, the NJSBA's academy program within two years. That means you've committed as a board to um, and, and the, to training, uh, a um, certain amount of training within two years, and then you get a certificate that say you're a certified board that you can hang in your board office. Um, that's just one one folk, one uh, potential goal. Um, then there's some general, you know, hold a workshop, some general governance goals, hold a workshop session with no one, with no action once every two months with a focus on proactive planning. Um, provide support for con continued achievement. Promote the district goals by providing the support and resources necessary to achieve the goals. And so as you're, as I'm winding down, when you go through this, consider the strengths and uh, recent achievements of your board. Um, what did you do well? What could you improve upon? What um, can you focus on that will um, increase and enhance your performance as a board? When you get through to doing the goals, when you when you um, determine what goals you'd like to do, you, you develop an action plan. This is what it looks like, and I'll bring examples next time of what it w with of what exactly goes in each of those columns. Um, and then the the next steps as we're mo as you're moving forward is to uh, have another meeting, hopefully, um, to um, set a date to uh, for board discussion on establishing the board goals. And once you do that, you move towards developing the action plans, you implement the action plans, and then you provide uh, periodic feedback to your community on where um, you are with your board goals. And lastly, ending with a quote, quote um, about serving all our students. Nothing, and we mean nothing, is more critical to the future of this world than rapidly and constantly improving systems of public schooling that serve all the students. And with that, I open it up for if there's any additional questions. So thank you, um, Patty. Um, can we get a copy of this? Uh, the PowerPoint, this absolutely. PowerPoint. I'll send it to you tomorrow morning. Okay. And um, so we're going to look at, I think the suggestion might be, and I'll talk to the board of having just a special meeting with nothing else on the agenda so that we can purely focus mm -hmm. on setting, deciding and right. setting our board right. goals that, so that we have choice. really yep. just the meeting set for mm -hmm. that. So there's, there's nothing other that we need to worry about. Yeah. So I'll reach out to the board and find out a mutually respectful time because everybody's busy to see if we can set a special meeting okay. and I'll reach out to you to see what works with you as well. Okay. Sounds right. good. One other quick, quick, quick question. Um, are there, Patty, outside of what we'll do as a group, are there uh, any sessions built into the uh, October school boards convention that we might want to just circle as individuals when we go to kind of reinforce what may there, um... there likely is, but okay. the list, they're still called cultivating that list okay. um, so I don't know the full extent of that yet I think okay. it'll be available um, I'm guessing sometime early September okay but Thanks. there's there's definitely lots of um, there's always lots of different sessions that would uh, focusing on board governance for sure thank you does anybody else have any goals for Ms. Reese? Oh, sorry, questions. Mm -hmm. Goals in that's my okay. mind. <laughs> See, I'm thinking goals. Yeah, <laughs> Any okay. questions? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any committee and liaison reports, please? No? Yes. Can, yes. No. Um, sorry, I... Yes. Okay. Um, 
Uh, for the town council, the community held a flag raising ceremony at the town hall, the flagpole on Wednesday the 12th uh, to recognize the beginning of the Feast of Mount Carmel and the raising of the Italian flag. The town continues to work on improving and updating the sewer treatment plant, which is a priority. And the town is currently in the process of paving and referring to the town website for additional street paving, which is coming up and other library and community events. In terms of the Recreation Committee, which I am a part of also, the summer activities continue. They're coming to an end next week, but they continue to thrive. They had an enormous amount of participation this year. Um, for the other committees, I have no update unless Mrs. Stanley, who did go to the, the UCESC, a meeting for me uh, this month. Yes. So I have to give Gail a ton of credit because she does so many of our liaisons. And when she sent me the Union County Educational Service Commission uh, agenda, I was like, there's 30 something attachments to this. <laughs> so you really have taken on so much. And this is only months in. And I really, really appreciate all that you do. And you take it very seriously. Um, they had a very simple meeting um, because it's the summer. Um but their biggest thing right now is that they're struggling to hire staff for teacher aides and paraprofessionals. Um, and so I, we're most of the districts agreed that we're all in the same boat in that area, but it is something that they desperately need. And they have a lot of students who have one-on-one -on -one, um, needs. So if you know anybody that uh, wants to reach out to them, um, and then they talked about their summer uh, activities and, you know, all the ways that it's helping our students, uh, their students, form bonds with not just their friends, but also with their families. Um, and they were talking about the opportunity to take their students to the movie theater and how many of these students don't go to the movie theater with their family because they haven't had a chance to do this before. And it's a new experience for them and how much their families struggle because they want to do fun stuff like this. And so it's having that time to finally do some of these extra things that can help them just bond with their families. So it was a really great meeting. And I thank Gail for all that she does every time she goes. So it was an eye opener on how much work it is. Um, and then I just want to talk briefly about their curriculum committee. We haven't, um, uh, had a regular session <laughs> and liaison reports since June. Um, so we did have a meeting. It was a two hour meeting. We had multiple administrators there. Um, I believe we will be seeing this presented to the public in September. Um, so just a brief overview. Most of you have seen the minutes and the attachments. Um, we talked about, you know, supporting the students. Um, and trying to balance that with the numbers. Um, we talked about how our special education students and our students with um, other needs, behavioral needs, um, anxiety, how all of that plays into uh, these numbers, um, especially when it comes to attendance. You know, you don't want to ask a student to come to school who is struggling. Um, right? We have to find ways to support them. And so some of the, we talked about ways that we have done that and try to bring students back into school um, by maybe giving them an area that they can come in that's private um, for them to do their work and be in school and be in session. Um, we talked about how we want to support our students who go beyond four years, um, but how that affects our graduation rate and how the Department of Education knows this and they're working to, you know, work on this and improve the system. So we did talk a lot about the numbers. As you can see, one of the numbers we talked about was this report um, that we didn't have yet, but how other years, um, other years that it has affected us and ways that we are trying to encourage our students, like Mr. Nixon said, to come prepared, to do their best. Um, so those, those emails that go home asking your children to get a good night's rest and eat a good breakfast, they are important. And we also talked about the importance of uh, the parents' mindset, about the parents saying, this is an important test and you need to take it seriously. Um, because we know over the years, there have been um, instances where parents didn't want their children to take these tests, but they do matter and they do make a difference. And so um, we'll ask for the community's support in that. But yeah, I, um, I encourage everybody to listen in next month and to uh, hear our administrators talk about it. And you'll find that they're love for the students really shine through. So I'm really proud of them. Um, and that's it for my committee and liaison reports. Yep. Can you hear me? Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, just a, a big um, accomplishment 
partnering with the BHAA. So the, the contract was ratified and we will be um, uh, voting on that today. So shout out to Mr. Nixon in the back <laughs> and every and Miss Stanley and Miss Dr. Forger um, as we worked together to come, you know, to a, an agreement with the BHAA. Um, so, you know, thank you to everyone and the dedication and the time spent um, to get it done. So thank you. Um, we also had the Finance and Facilities Committee had a couple of meetings over the past couple of months. A um, couple of things that we have been discussing um, include um, there is a Safer Watch app donation that was um, being considered, and there was some legal review that was happening, and we were also made aware of an alternate app that our insurance company will offer, um, uh, one aspect of it free of charge. So we're starting to, you know, after being made aware of that, we're going to take a look and do a comparison since our insurance company um promotes it or, you know, knows that the, the company um, has um, has presence in New Jersey area. Um, and there's uh, neighboring districts that we're going to reach out to as well to understand their interaction with that particular app. So just wanted to make folks aware with that. Um, and we also had, an, had to have an emergency meeting with regards to busing. Um, because there was an emergency busing situation due to lack of drivers. There was hope that there was going to be the hiring of um, a, a driver, and that did not happen, which resulted in the elimination of a subscription um, bus line. Now, that's not part of the evaluation that the group is doing with regards to overall busing. That was just strictly not enough people to perform the work um, that the transportation team wanted and they had provided the the community or the parents that were impacted that that la that date of if we don't you know have someone or have drivers by that time there's you know your busing is in jeopardy and so unfortunately um, the transportation group had to uh, you know let those parents know that that was not going to happen um and I Joy, can I ask a follow-up to that because mm -hmm. I think it's Subscription busing, it's definitely a hot button. And I think mm -hmm. just the impact on the daily lives of everybody, parents Understood. and students, massive, not to mention the traffic, not to mention mm -hmm. the whole other thing. My question is, have why can we not reevaluate all of the bus routes? We are. I mean, they did. That I mean, is, there, that there was so and I'm we really would it's probably be best to have Kelly, but she that's the lead of transportation. There was, how do we, you know, is there an opportunity to revamp um, some of the bus lines? And, and really it was timing, like the way that the, the, the let out of the timing of the different schools, the overlap, which would mean students would be waiting or, you know, it would be very long. And so, you know, a decision, they, they did just didn't have enough to provide the the um busing in in the manner that they thought was appropriate so I, but does it mean that they have stopped going down that path of trying to figure a solution no i think they're still look they're, they're still, still actively pursuing so the, but right now there's just not enough drivers to to do the to the bus line and we can i know that kelly's been in direct contact with impacted parents and so she's having conversations but it's I, you know, we still need drivers. I know she was asking for drivers so to some of the communications that came back that I think she's like, there's, and I'll do a plug for CDL, someone with a CDL with passenger school and air brake endorsements are needed desperately. And if we can get them, you know, maybe there's a change, but at this point, we don't have enough bus drivers to do that. So do we have a sense of how many students are directly impacted as a result of the subscription busing route not happening yes i had the number 28 i think it was that i believe it was 28 28 students mm -hmm. and part of my just i've been trying to just get a better understanding of the data and i haven't been successful in 
even getting a simple representation of how many kids get courtesy busing by school, subscription busing by school, and just ones that are eligible to get busing. And I know that Kelly, we said during one of the meetings that we were going to, like, I think September, do a deep dive because we knew we couldn't make changes you know, for this coming school year and anything, if there was any changes or adjustments, it would be not until next school year. Um, so that evaluation we, as a committee still needs to happen. This was just strictly, there's not enough drivers. So that's what now part of, I think the evaluation is, will be, okay, is two, I think it's two that we're down. Is two really what we need? Is it more, you know, like what is, what does it really look like to be better? So I know that was a commitment that after getting the bus routes and everything finalized that in September, after the first couple of weeks of school, the finance committee was coming back together to finalize and review all of that in detail. Okay. So thanks. If you remember, um, Tipti, with some of the conversations in the finance meeting, the committee has um, committed to making sure that we will reevaluate it all. You know, when we had the discussion over the budget season, we we determined that we would need to take a deep dive and look at it. But this this was separate. We will still be doing that, and the committee still going to look at that. That's it. Thank you. Do we have any board? Do we have any board communication? We received uh, 13 communications from community members, one um, regarding the curriculum committee and school rankings, one regarding educator year awards. Three community members were saddened to hear that the district had to let go of one of the music teachers. One community member invited the board to attend a flag raising in support for Pride Month. Another community member wrote about this salary guide placement. Another one requested a proficiency analysis for the district. And another one stated some concerns concerning matters that we're not happy to see throughout the district. Three members inquired about the Oprah process and one community member had busing concerns. Thank, thank you. Um, let's see where we are. Okay, so we are now at the public comment section on agenda items. So I will just read this. Uh, during, can you hear me? Is this working? During this portion of the meeting, district residents and staff are invited to address the Board of Education on agenda action items only. The Board requests that individuals state their name and town of residence or school of attendance for the record. All comments should be directed to the board president, and depending on the nature and complexity of the question, it may or may not be answered during the meeting by the administration. If so, the response would occur after the public portion of the meeting has concluded. Although the board may not respond to all items raised during the public forum, all public comments will be considered. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals in speaking. Specific comments regarding personnel matters are discouraged and cannot be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the laws of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. Please note that if any member of the public becomes disruptive during the meeting, the board president may terminate the participant's statement. Continued disruptions may result in removal from or adjournment of the meeting. Each speaker's statement will be limited to three minutes in duration. If you please come up, state your name. Anybody who would like to have a public? Hello, Natasha Jolly at 60 Orion Road. So this is a question um, regarding the update for the finance committee and the subscription busing. So I'm a little confused if we said that changes cannot be made in September. I think Joy said that to the to the routes, right? So isn't subscription busing a change to busing 
And if we report the number of um, students who receive um, courtesy busing to the state, which I think was 337 at the last report, why, if we can eliminate subscription busing, can't we eliminate um, can't we eliminate a courtesy busing? They're not for kids that are not paying for it, and maybe that would free up some routes. Like, how do we not have a handle on who exactly is getting courtesy busing? And I don't understand why that can't be changed given that subscription busing was eliminated. And then one other question, sorry, this is with respect to the curriculum committee update. At the last board meeting. This is agenda items. You you do have the right to come up and speak, but at the end, my apologies, I didn't realize you. So sorry, to, just to clarify, anybody who has comments on agenda items, could you please come up? Okay, Shauna Williams, Berkeley Heights. Actually, I don't know if this is allowed, but I had a question for Mr. Nixon, if he's still here. Um, do we know what the uh, PSAT and SAT scores are for the GPA? I know it's like not exactly agenda, but if that's available, thank you. I'm Harkvia Kiri, 146 Robbins. So on the agenda item, I think we have approved appointment of assistant superintendent for curriculum. I see the dates for the contract say August 16th to September 10th, 2023. So is it just for like less than a month? That's the first question. And also on, um, I believe this appointment was done at a special board meeting on June 29th. So can the community get some input on who were on the interview, on the interview process, who were on the panel, and um, how many board members actually interviewed the assistant superintendent? And uh, if the community get, get some update on this, that would be great. Thank you. Also, um, just a feedback is if you give the liaison reports ahead of the public, you know, questioning period, it's just a suggestion. It feels like it's part of the agenda. So community members can come up and speak. So if it's not part of the agenda and we cannot ask questions on the updates, then just give them at the end. That way it saves us time too. Thank you. Anybody else would like to come up and speak on agenda items? No? Um, questions um for the psat sat mr dixon i'm not those haven't come in yet yeah. just wanted to know if we knew Thank you. Um, the exact cut scores, I don't know specifically off the top of my head, but there's a link on our website that tells you all of the um, different graduation pathways and what their cut scores are. There's a lot. There, there, there's a lot of them, so it would take a while to go through them, but you, you can see it there. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mr. Nixon. As far as the assistant superintendent contract, we initially wrote his contract starting September 11th because that was when um, we have initially considered that he would be able to start. However, his board has released him early, so his start date is August 16th. In order to do that, it's not as simple as amending just a start date. You have to issue another contract for that time. So that is the reason it is less than a month. His other contract will kick in on September 11th. As far as the interview process, we had a parent. We had board members. We had one board member. We had two two board members. Two board members. We had administrators, teachers, um, 
And I think that's it. It was a very well-rounded stakeholder group for the assistant superintendent interviews. And that's it. No, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, I think it works. Um, so I would like a motion to approve the minutes, resolution A to all member, members. And this is for executive session minutes from June 5th, 2023, regular session minutes from June 5th, 2023, executive session minutes from June 29th, 2023, and regular session minutes from June 29th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Yes. Any discussion? Can we have some roll call, please, Lisa? Ms. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Chinchuli? Yes. Dr. Foraker? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Uh, I'm yes to the June 5th dates. Uh, I'm abstained for June 29th. Uh, I was not in, in attendance for either of those. Mrs. Khanna? Same yes for A and B, abstain C and D, because I wasn't there. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. And Mrs. Penner? Yeah. Okay, adoption of policies, curriculum guides, and textbooks. Uh, may I have a motion? That's resolution A through D. All board members may I have a motion to approve that. So moved. Second? Second. Uh, do we have any discussion? Yes. Um, I was, I was on the textbook list, I was looking at it today. And um, we noticed in the math area, there were a lot of books, actually some from the 1990s and 2000s. And I thought, well, gee, we can't be using books that are that old. And um, at least I hope we're not. So uh, I decided to look into it. And I took Algebra two honors. And it showed in the textbook list, we're using Advanced Algebra UCSMP. Well, that's the old Chicago math. I don't think we use Chicago math anymore. The author is Sank from 1992. So then there's another one, Algebra 2 by Dr. Charles Randy. It's also on the list from Prentice Hall, 2004. So then I decided to look at uh, the curriculum guide for the course, and that has Algebra, Glencoe Algebra 2 by John Carter from McGraw-Hill Education, 2014, electronic. So... I don't have confidence that this list is actually up to date. So what I'd like to propose is that uh, maybe we come back in a month and have make sure that at least the math ones are up to date. And I'll help you with that if you want. So was, Robert, was this a policy? No. No, this no. was not. So, so um, the last time we approved curricula, uh, textbooks and curriculum, this same issue came up and we talked about how we don't take away resources from our teachers. Um, that doesn't mean they're current textbooks, but that if they ever wanted to use these resources, they had them. We had this exact conversation the last time we had this around. So I think that's why you're seeing these is that we never want to limit the teachers and their um ability to go back and use a resource from those textbooks. But yes, we don't currently use those textbooks. Well, I, I have to say that this is these are the resources that are listed for the students. Okay. And then there's a separate section for teacher resources. I didn't get into that. And I certainly wouldn't have any objection to moving, you know, things off of the textbook list that we're showing and identifying them as um, teacher resources. But I thought this was a list of, these are the books that we actually use for the students. And I'm not asking, you know, for the entire list to be redone, that'd be wonderful, but just to, just to make me happy, just to get the math ones right. There is a, an entire process that you have to go through to abolish a textbook. It You have to contact the DOE, you have to put in all this information, and then they have to come and check your inventory if you're abolishing a textbook. So I know teachers are 
they find something that they like in one textbook and they may keep it forever and they may actually hand it to a student. It doesn't mean that it's a part of the curriculum. It's just a textbook that they can have access to. And I, well, we did discuss this last year as well. We do not want to take any way, anything away from them that they use to help students learn better. No, I'm, I'm not asking for a, abolishment of a textbook. I mean, I'm just asking to have an accurate list of what the students are expected to use for a course. This is, I'm not talking about teacher resources here. I'm talking about student resources. So if we don't approve this, you're saying that we don't have those textbooks. No. We will be starting the school year without textbooks. No, no, no. You certainly you have say? textbooks. You have, you have, you have to have approve textbooks. You have to approve it. You have textbooks that are adopted as part of your curriculum. This is just a compilation of what the curriculum shows. It's just not an accurate reflection of what those curriculum documents say. Yeah, I, I, I was I was trying to reason with you, but if you want a motion, then we'll say let's table this for a month and come back to me can, in a month. Can Can, can I ask just yeah. Can I ask a question just yeah. before you do that? Yeah. Question number one: All these textbooks. Is it reasonable to say that they are available for the students in the schools? Or are we publishing this list to the parents to say, here are the textbooks that your children need to refer to for the course of the year? This is a list of textbooks that students and teachers have access to. It does not mean that they're actually using them. The curriculum textbooks, the ones that are newly approved, et cetera, are the ones used now they're, but they're there as a resource if a teacher or wanted to give something to a student to use. This entire list, though, is for the 23-24 school year. And you as a board approve it or the teachers don't have textbooks coming up in on August 30th. So, I mean, I just, that we had the same discussion last year. Nothing's changed. It's still the same answer. The textbooks I'm, I'm, are I'm not questioning whatever was done last year. I'm just trying to better understand the implication of approving this. What, what am I approving? Am I approving a list that will be published to parents that says, go get these textbooks for your kids? No, this is a list that is internal that the supervisors and directors keep. Um, an ongoing list of textbooks that have been approved, uh, books, library books, except not library books, but classroom library books, et cetera. This is not a published list. This but, is an internal But does list. it give the- But the, these, uh, are, these are books that are, if you're, if you're saying that if a book is not on this list, they can't use it, then you have a whole lot of books that are, in, that are adopted as part of your curriculum. As curriculum so, guide, specify books. You're saying though, because they're not on this list, those books can't be used? So, so, hold on. so Dr. Volley, is there a, a list of books that are being used this year that you could provide for Tom? So, because I think he's getting... Tom has little... come in and looked at a lot of books. Um, but I assume the supervisors, I mean, it's a waste of their time to go out and get books to bring for him to look at. Like there is something to trust our professionals who put this list together. Okay. But I, I mean, we can do it. I can ask them to get books me, together. But I have just not, the list, not the books. Just the me. list. I have not just come in. List. I, have, I don't know list. where I'm you get this, but books. I have not come in and looked at a lot of books. I haven't looked at any books. No. At the list? When? Been last year and looked at geometry. You come in. No, I did had... not come in and look at any guys, geometry okay, books. Guys, guys, please. Let's have some decorum here. Um, so let's let's take a vote then. Let's take a roll call. I all right. If you want a motion, then let's table this for a month. Just come back to me with an up to date list. That's all I want. That shouldn't be so hard. I just received a message that what you're looking at is an outdated source. That there's a the new list just has resources. They don't break it out anymore with students or teachers. It is a resource list. So how do we I don't understand. I, I, I don't even know what I'm approving then. I have a list from uh, last year. You're approving. You have a new list. Every year the list is updated. Yes. Okay, so we're going to vote on a list that we haven't seen. Is that right? You have to trust the professionals who have put this list together. Yes. 
So are we are we voting to table or are we voting? We're going well, to vote. You're asking me to vote on a list. You're seriously if, asking me to so vote on a list that I've not seen. If Tom, Is if that you, right? If we're not tabling it, then if you don't want to vote, and just vote I, no. I'm moving to table it, yes. Okay. Do I need a motion to table? Second. What's the implication of the of the motion to table? Does that hinder the start of the school year? I'm, I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out. They will not have the resources that are on this list. In what way will they not have the resources? You have to approve their access to these resources. That's what this, this agenda item is for. Resources that are online? The ones that are on the list, the textbook list, the classroom libraries, et cetera. That is what this list is. You are you would be in effect hindering the teachers from beginning of the school year. So okay. I can just, just my interpretation of the resolution language it says recommended that the board of education adopt the textbooks. Since it says adopt the tux, the textbooks and not necessarily adopt a list, it my just in reading the language of the resolution it appears that it's the textbooks that you're authorizing the teachers to use this upcoming school year. My interpretation and of the we, resolution. So so if we get. If, if we, we don't have, if, we, if we can get the list and you know for whatever reason there is a new one that gets added to the list is there an amendment that happens i'm sorry i i'm doing this for the first time so no i understand but i think this resolution is not that you're approving a list this resolution reads it's um, it's recommended that the board of education adopt the textbooks as noted on the official textbook listing so it seems like you're actually authorizing the actual resources not just a list of them so if we don't vote on this, then they don't start the year with the with this books. They okay. can't have access. They can't have access to them. Okay. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, that's how that the resolution reads. Okay. So we need to take a vote then. Angela, I'm I'm pretty concerned that people came to this meeting unprepared to know what they're voting on, right? Like if they didn't even know what D was, like that's that's it's extremely troubling, right? Like because that's part of the job. Right. We need to right. move to the vote. Can we please move to the vote? Are we moving? Are we moving to the We're table? not going to. I don't. So Tom motioned to table. Do we have a second? So if we don't have a second, we then we move on to the vote. Yeah. So let's move on to the vote because okay. we don't have a second. Am I on? Okay. Ms. Bradford. Yes to all resolutions A through D. Mr. Chinchuli. Yes to all. Dr. Foraker. No. Uh, Mr. No, yes to A through C. No on D. A to C, yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes to all. Mrs. Khanna? Yes to all with the condition that I'd like to see the list if it has been circulated with the rest of the board members as has been brought up. I would like to get that because I didn't get the list. Mrs. Stanley? Yes, and no, there was no circulation. Mrs. Young? Yes. And Mrs. Penna? Yes. Okay, it's very confusing. All right, administration. Uh, I'd like to approve a motion, resolutions A through K, all board, board members. So moved. I, thank, do I have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? I had two, two quick questions. Sure. Um, uh, for uh, this is on the policy side first. For ninety one forty citizens advisory committees. Dr. Riley, would you mind just maybe just explaining or maybe giving an example? So like, um, are we talking about, is this just a word change of citizens replacing essentially what was public before? Or is the, is an example like like the DEI committee that was, that was is that an example? It could be. It could okay. be like DEI. It could be the green team that we're going to um, okay. adopt this upcoming year, okay. things like that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And then I was going to ask um, for the abolishment uh, under C of 9100 is, are we... Is that infused somewhere else? Yes, or that's it? in policy 9120. Okay, got it. And I'm sure there's other um, policy policy questions, but the only one, only other question I have was under G. Um, I, my recollection from an athletics perspective is we've traditionally just used JAG. Is SD uh, game day, is that like, are we, do we know, and maybe this is an and question we can come back on, but is this like equally waiting um, wherever we need sort of backfill from a training perspective between those two, or are they just backing up JAG? They're just backing up JAG. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any more discussion? Yes, I have two. I'll go with the, the first question is, this is item C, 
abolishing policy 9100. I believe we've gotten the name incorrect. It's not public relations. When you look at this on the policy page, 9100 is school community relations goals. This is not the, the right policy. Public relations is actually policy 9120. So that's point number one. Um, point number two, when I read the policy, um, I couldn't figure what is truly the business reason, if I can call it, to abolish this policy. Um, when we saw the self-evaluation of the board, I think there were two scores, if you scrutinized it, there were two scores on that list uh, on a scale of one to four, with four being the highest. The self-evaluation score was an average of 1.9 on a question that said, our board with broad community input established a district-wide mission and a multi-year plan for education. We scored ourselves 1.9. The second score with an average of 1.9 was in the board and community section of the evaluation. So this just seems um, sort of at cross purposes of what we think our board goals are and us abolishing a policy that uh, incentivizes or actually says we need to get community input um, as a way for the board to function better. So I'll, I'll, let's get through this. I have another policy question. So. 9100, I think we have the, it's just the title's incorrect. Um, oddly enough, so um, Strauss Esme did That's post right. that as public relations. It is on there. Um, but they also said in their alert that this is replaced by 9120. So 9100 for us may be a very old policy that um, was never updated by Strauss Esme. But 9100 is absolved in 9120. Which you, you do have, we already have um, approved. Let me see what date that is. If we approve that, can I ask that policy committee chair? Did you oh, receive any right. questions about oh, this just prior about to the meeting? Night. Did you have this conversation, policy committee? Last night, after the meeting took place last night, was the first time. Okay. 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 It, it's right in our attachments, though. It's just wrong on the actual agenda, is what we're saying, or, or incomplete, I guess. Okay, so it's just wrong on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? Yes. I'm, I'm just going to read you from 9100 uh, what it says. Number two, to invite the advice and counsel of the people of the, of the school district at all times, and especially at regular meetings of the board. And number three, to solicit the sound thinking and studied counsel of the people through advisory committees selected from the community and appointed by this board to consider those problems which vitally affect the future of our children. I don't see that language in 9120. I, I agree with the intent of 9100, so that's why. What about 90? I don't have it open, but 9140 with yes. the citizens advisory committees i i interpreted that as the way to come together like getting the community and getting other people involved and and so when i saw the abolishment of that pr one i thought the advice this the citizen advisory committees would take over for what was lost in that so i i, I believe part of it would but it sort of puts the onus on again a committee 9100 just seems like a broad policy that seeks input from the community. And it just seems to be counterintuitive to why we would abolish that. So, I, can, I can just repeat. I was going to say, to ask the question again, did you have this conversation in policy oh, committee? Well, no. Some clarification. But okay. let, me, let me read you what Strauss Esme says in the... Um, they provide sort of an announcement uh, or alert. Uh, 9100, a district may have policy guide 9100, public relations. This is how it's referred to in their policy manual, which includes similar language that's included in certain section from the New Jersey Code and policy guide 9120. I know you've mentioned 9140. This says it could be similar language in 9120, which I 
believe we have. Mm -hmm. um, that mandated language in the code is already in 9120. Therefore, they're abolishing 9100 because the mandatory language we need is in the mandatory policy that we have in 90, uh, 9120. That's it in a nutshell. It, it does, I, I just want to say, if it's communicating with the public is something we already have a responsibility to do, hopefully there's not one person at this table who's going to do it only because it's in the policy and not do it if it's not in the policy. So, of course, no, I know, but I think it, the, it, the it's thought is just making sure that it's our foundation, like it's part of our foundational if, language. If anyone needs it in the policy book, by all means, if that's what people need. No, no, foundation. I'm just, I, well, the other thing is if you, 9120 covers, I, I didn't look at 9120. I just saw the, I was thinking this other one, the citizens one. If so, you, I'm okay. If you need to see it in the policy book in order to communicate with the public, I'm fine with having it. This discussion could have been had in policy committee. And um, on the on the minutes, I did link the alert mm -hmm. that has that in there that tells you that it's in ninety one twenty. At the bottom. Okay. So that was ninety one hundred. Um, I have a question on one fifty five. I think it's a first reading one fifty five. The first one, the board committees. So I think. When I read the text for 155, it basically said um, a committee cannot take action on behalf of the or on behalf of the board, or they're not authorized to take action. I'm curious what action means here. As an example, basically vote. Where where committees are not a quorum, so that's, right. So we can't take board action like a, a vote would be taking action. So I'm curious, the whole subscription busing, I, I thought I read on email that the decision was taken by the committee. Does that sound like- Well, action? it was a recommendation Does... by transportation that they couldn't fulfill it. And so we were made aware of it. And now we're sharing, like that, it was- That was more of a consultative that basis. A, that was not an it official- wasn't a vote. It, it wasn't a vote. It was more of, to I engage. mean- it was an engagement to, for them saying, I, I don't have enough drivers. <laughs> I mean, I, we need and to we make said, okay, understood. Because and, but, but I think changing, changing every, like we would have to, the next step of really evaluating that takes the whole vote. This was more of, we have a situation and we don't have enough drivers and making the committee aware and then sharing it out. Because to me, there were sort of, when I read the policy, there were two pieces. When we take away the subscription busing, there's a certain revenue that's associated with in the budget. If right. we are if we are going to take that revenue, the 28 students, if we are going to take that revenue away from the budget, um, it's sort of, we are, so would, and, would that qualify as the finance committee taking action this on should behalf be new of the business board. because this actually wasn't changed in that policy at all like that that sentence is not touched on so this should be under new business not under i'm happy discussion. to raise this with new business i'm trying Great. to understand the definition of the word action what constitutes action it's not, it's not defined i've always uh, maintained that action would be uh something like a vote or making a decision you know top down taking action this was not that's not what committees really do True. nor have the power to do so that i i'm not sure i see it the same way i don't think this required board action or committee action i think we were consulted and sort of told and it's a way of communicating from the administrators in this case our transportation supervisor to the committee and then you know on the agenda now that we can discuss it out with you um, through the committee chair. So I, I don't think anyone took action. Okay. Can we, if we don't have any more discussion, can we take a roll call, please? Ms. Bradford? Yes, to all resolutions A through K. 
Mr. Chinchuli? Yes, Sewell. Dr. Foriger? Um, yes to almost all A through K, no to C. Mr. Hyman? Yes to all. Mrs. Khanna? Yes uh, to all except C, no to C. Mrs. Stanley? Yes to all. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mrs. Penna? Yes. Look at education. So moved. I can hear you. No, it's not working very well. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, did I get a motion? Yeah, yes, so moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Can I just get, I, I wanted to email you the the open under M, the open Syed field test district agreement. This sounds really interesting. I wasn't sure. So um, at the end of last school year, uh, Mr. Dagunas and Mary Beth Copaz, all they joined together to write. You want to help me with this? Because I know enough about it to make me dangerous. But they <laughs> um, wrote a grant for this open Syed. And now I'll turn it over to Mr. Finley. Um, yeah, this was a program that we brought into the middle school a couple of years uh, ago, um, something that's piloted by the state, um, as well as um, some different university constituents that are working together to provide an open source science program that's all hands on. Um, we were able to get in on the pilot back then. Um, actually, Tommy Clayton is one of our lead teachers. He helps design and write the stuff with the state now uh, and runs trainings. Um, so we were we applied and were asked to continue that relationship with the state. Um, very prestigious. We're going to get uh, free training uh, with the state. They'll the teachers will be able to offer feedback um, and uh, guide the development of these resources. Um, there's stipends stipends associated with it, so it's a great opportunity for both our students and our teachers. Yeah, it sounds really exciting. It's also at the elementary levels too, though this year, right? Right, that, right. No, it's it yeah. extends to the elementary. Yes, now. absolutely. Yes, okay. just checking. Okay. Any more discussion? No. Roll call, please. Ms. Bradford? Yes to all resolutions. Mr. Chinchuli? Yes to all. Dr. Forger? Yes to all. Mr. Hyman? Yes on items A through K. Mrs. Kana? Yes to all. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mrs. Penna? Yes. Okay, personnel. I'd like a motion to approve resolutions A through AA or board members. The resolution AB to AL Berkeley Heights. So do I have a motion? I think it's AI. Is it AI? AI? AI. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, one quick question for me. Uh, for S, uh, as in Sam, are we? The transition coordinator, is that a role that we're going to replace eventually or soon? Yes. Yes, it is. We've already posted for it. Cool. And I also just wanted to quickly, while we're in the S and TU area, say just thanks to Mike Scarra again, officially for 17 years. We got that right oh. of service. So thank you again. And I know she's not here, but also thanks to Julie Gott for, um, for her time and, and all of her help over the last year. Yeah. Julie really has done amazing work for us the last two years. Um, I, the budget that she's had to deal with this year was incredible. And I really do thank you for everything. So I'm sad to see her go even earlier than expected, um, but I'm I'm sure that they're excited to get her before the school year. I also want to thank Michelle Gardner. Our, our district is so much better because of her and all that she has done for our special education students and our program. Um, we really wish her the best in her future. And we know that she's gonna go on to do great things. Um, there was, was there someone else? Mr. Finley. Is he under this one too? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Then we're really excited for Mr. Finley. Um, he's been working really hard. He's one of our, our great administrators. So we're excited for him and his future. So yeah. I too just want to say on behalf of the board, <laughs> Mr. Finley, 
welcome aboard. We're very excited to have you. Um, so congratulations. I'd also like to say thank you to Mr. Scarra for all his hard work. I've known Mr. Scarra a long time and he's been in the district a long time. And I also, a special thank you to Michelle Gardner. I've known Michelle Gardner since my son was about three. Not only have I worked with her as a parent, as a liaison, uh, special ed, um, and she is going to be sorely missed. She, she absolutely is uh, an absolute treasure to this district, and we will miss her dearly. So I wish her well in her retirement. So thank you all. Thank congratulations you. to Mr. Finley, and we'll miss you, Mike Scarra. Yes, congratulations, Mr. Finley, and thank you to Michelle Gardner, to those, um, and Mike Scarra, and of course to Julie Cott. Um, for Emily's position, um, we're going to replace that. I hope we're going to replace that as a full-time position because she's only part-time. So that was something that we brought up, and that's something that, depending on if we can fund the money in the budget, it's something that is going to be considered. Thank you. Right, so if we have no more discussion, can we take roll call, please? Ms. Bradford? Yes to all. Mr. Chinchuli? Yes, except on why. No to Toby Marcus. <laughs> Dr. Foraker? Yes to all. Mr. Hyman? Uh, yes on A through AA. Mrs. Kana? Yes to all. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mrs. Penna? Yes. Okay, we're at business. Uh, resolution, we need a motion to approve resolution A through T, all board members, and U through V, Berkeley Heights only. Do so I have a motion? Moved. Second. Uh, discussion. I have a question on. Um, I think it's P, which is the Data Warehousing Navigator Analytics Services. Can you maybe talk about what are the services that they will provide? What's the deliverable? What's the benefit? What are we getting out of it? So um, Linkit is a program that Mary Beth brought in, I think her first year here, it does... Um, it handled, we used to have something called Forecast 5, which basically gave us information that we could have Googled. Um, and so Mary Beth brought in Linkit, and Linkit houses our data. Our students go in and take benchmark exams. They take mid-year exams, and it compiles all that data, and then it compares it to the NJSLA, as well as Start Strong, as well as the NJGPA, et cetera. It's a, it's a program that has really helped us get a, get a handle on all of our data. Okay, that's helpful. And then just an overarching question, because I see a lot of uh, contracts and, and whatnot in this list. Uh, this was a few months ago while Dr. Greer was still here. I remember there was... Um, an audit activity that was initiated. I'm not sure if we actually saw the official report that came out of it. Um, I'm curious, how do these contracts sort of, you know, stack up against the findings and, you know, what did we learn out of that? We um, are going to go over the findings on Monday. Dr. Giordano and I have a meeting with the company to get their final report. And then we will present that report to both the technology committee as well as the finance and facilities committee. Um, I just wanted to thank um, the Highlander Booster Club. Just, okay, good. That was, I didn't want to forget that. This is a pretty awesome donation. I, was, I just wanted to thank the Highlander Booster Club and uh, I think it's Smith Chiropractic Foundation for their awesome donation of $2,500. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. Any more discussion? Oh, I, I, did, I forgot uh, item T, the agreement with the YMCA. This is them using our facilities? Yes, for, you... for and after school. Yes. So that's, is that the OASIS program? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if we have no more discussion, can we go to roll call, please, Lisa? Ms. Bradford? Yes to all. Mr. Chanchuli? Yes to all. Dr. Foraker? Yes to all. Mr. Hyman? 
Yes on items A through T. Mrs. Kana? Yes to all. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mrs. Penna? Yes. Okay, finance resolution. I need a motion to approve resolution A through D, all board members. So moved, I did the bills. Okay, super. Second? Second. Do we have any discussion? If there's no discussion, we'll move forward to roll call, please. Ms. Bradford? Yes, to A through D. Mr. Chanchuli? Yes, to all. Dr. Foraker? Yes, to all. Mr. Hyman? Yes, to all. Mrs. Kana? Yes, to all. Mrs. Stanley? Yes, to all. And thank you, Joy. I know August is a long one. I did it last year. <laughs> Mrs. Young? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Penna? Yes. Okay, so we will move to the public comment section on any items. So, Ms. Jolly, if you want to come up. Uh, can you hear me yes. great okay so getting back to the busing question so how um if we were to eliminate um courtesy busing right which is essentially free busing could that not potentially create capacity to keep subscription busing right when that capacity and there's and and to me it boggles the mind that we have no way to identify, or maybe we do because we do report those numbers that uh, of students who are, you know, courtesy busing. And so you eliminated subscription busing without taking the whole picture into account because that could have created some capacity. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Mr. Nixon and Mr. Finley over there for making a comment that um, you know, they encourage their students to do well on exams, no matter what exam it is, because that's why I encourage my kids to do as well. And that I don't think we should look to kids not caring about exams as a reason for you know, uh, declining scores or scores that are not up to par, because our kids are no different than any other kids in any other district, and we see different results. So finally, getting back to um, May the 11th, when Dr. Foraker asked for the superintendent to do a presentation, it was taken into committee June 6th. There was a committee meeting where a report, a document, PowerPoint, whatever, was presented. June 29th, Ms. Stanley told me, you know, after numerous emails, that this document does not exist. It is a quote. It is on camera. I have it, you know. There's no secret document, no document is available, no such document. On July 13th, I received this document via OPRA request. So I think if we're gonna call out members for not doing their jobs, I would like to you know, have an explanation for that. And hopefully it's not semantics about what a report is versus a presentation versus a document. So thank you. Okay, Shauna Williams, Berkeley Heights. It's a real shame that Mrs. Patricia Reese is not here because I distinctly remember her saying at one of her presentations that any board member is free to bring up items in the public that they feel it is important for the public to hear, that they do not need to be asked only in committee. That is straight from the person who trains you. I don't ever wanna hear any one of you ever say again that it is inappropriate to bring up something in public when you've been told otherwise by the person who trains you. Thank you. Sai Bhargavi Akhiri. So first I'd like to thank Mike Skara and Michelle Gardner for their esteemed years of service. Um, I wish you good luck. And um, I would like to ask some questions. These have been in your inbox to the entire board and Dr. Worley since June 22nd. I'll repeat, uh, I can read out the question here, hoping I'll get an answer here because it's been more than, I think, a month and a half. 
Um, since busing was one of the key issues highlighted during the 2023-2024 budget planning process and the focus on equity of busing for all students, I wanted to follow up on the topic of courtesy and subscription busing. During the budget process, we heard both Julie Cott and Pam Stanley, Pamela Stanley, share some numbers for courtesy busing at the March and the April board meetings. At the March 30th board meeting, Pamela Stanley said, there are 200 courtesy busing students out of which 144 students go to GL, Governor Livingston. The data submitted by our district to the New Jersey State Department of Education for the DRTRS report, which is District Report on Transported Resident Students was shared and it's publicly available on the DOE website, shows that we have 337 courtesy busing students. We have seen in the community multiple emails from parents written to the board. Some of them were answered by Dr. Worley, and some were obviously just never answered by anybody, including mine. So a simple question is, I looked at the DOE website. There's a process for uploading this information. The district has to maintain a sheet, a worksheet, or an Excel sheet that has to be uploaded. So why is it so difficult for the district to come up and give a clear answer on where are these, why is there a discrepancy in what the board was telling us during the budget planning process versus what was reported to the state? It's a difference of 137 students. And we also saw the meeting minutes from the finance committee meeting from February, 2023, where Julie Cott said in the minutes, inequity in courtesy busing, because, and this is a doc, it's your minutes, these were published. So the business administrator said there's inequity in courtesy busing. So for the, how is it okay for a publicly funded school district to charge thousand dollars per student for subscription busing while you're paying, while you're making it free for 337 students? That's $337,000 in revenue. It's like, I think, in Dr. Worley speak, maybe three or four teachers. So can I get a clarification on why is there a discrepancy? Also in regards to 0155, the policy, I heard Mr. Chinchuli say an action means a decision or a vote. So from based on the report that Mrs. Young gave, let me finish my sentence. Mrs. Young gave was... A decision to cancel subscription massing was made at the Finance and Facility Committee meeting. That's an action, in my opinion. That's a decision. So how is it you, okay if your policy doesn't allow you to make take Karen, actions? Very, yeah, let me finish my sentence. Everybody has given three minutes. We have to be consistent with everybody. Is there anybody else behind me? We have me? to be consistent with everybody. So please, your three minutes are up. Appreciate your comments, but your three minutes is up. Thank you. If you have more questions or concerns, please feel free to email the board. Like the email from June 22nd, which you have never answered. Have Thank you. Yeah. Reach this is back. today is Thank August 10th. You have not answered an email from June 22nd, June 22nd. And you want me to keep emailing you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Mr. Kerry. Thank you so much. Um I want to clarify. When we were doing the budget process, we talked about doing a proper survey and impact traffic study about all the busing. So we're still going to do that. So that is still on the agenda on the finance committee to do. Steve Gregoski, Berkeley Heights. Four quick questions for the board president. Uh, first of all, on June 2nd uh, at Columbia, the sixth graders were given a school climate assessment uh, in which they were asked a variety of questions, including sexual orientation, gender identity, religion, and race. I'd like you to comment on why that data was taken, how it's being used, and uh, how that it's going to uh, impact our rankings in student achievement. That's the first question. Second comment or co question really is, I looked on the website and I saw that there were 28 open positions for the district. Now I know some of them have been filled. 
I'd like to know how many left are, are remaining to be filled and you know, what's the impact on student learning as a result of all those vacancies? That's the second question. Third one, this New Jersey state has issued a guidance regarding transgender. I'd like your comments on how the board has implemented that guidance, particularly as it relates to parental notification. And the final item is Mary Beth Copez had put together a wonderful program for word study for K through five that uh, was supposed to be implemented, I suppose, this September. I'd like to know the status of that. Is it actually going to happen? Thank you. Thank you. Um, you able to answer any of those questions? So as far as the school climate survey, every um, district in the state of New Jersey is required to do a school climate survey. Any questions that the students do not want to fill out are optional. There is, no, there is nothing mandatory. As far as the um, positions we have, I couldn't say how many we have open. We have paras. We have uh, new, new, some new teachers that we have to fill, and we now we have to fill the director of special services, the technology coordinator, and I think, and now an assistant principal. So um, we are, are having a little domino effect over here. And as far as the um, K to two phonics program, it is on target to be implemented starting in September. We have um, training happening during new, to, uh, not new teacher orientation, the staff in, um, staff training days, uh, the 28th and 29th. You can find our transgender policy online. The, you do ask the questions to the board president, but the majority of the questions will are need to be answered by obviously administration because a lot of the questions will relate to administration. Because so, if if there's something that the board president can answer, I absolutely will. But majority of questions typically are they're directed at the board president, but they are answered by the administration if we can answer them, and if we can't, we can absolutely find out the information and get back to you. Okay. believe the policy hasn't changed. So, um, I'd like to close. If there are no more members of the public wanting to come up and make public comment, um, I'm going to close the public session. We, we, it's not in. No. No. Okay, so we will now move on to, uh, I will close it, and we will now move on to new business. Anybody got any new business? Um, can we, uh, later on, we will take a, um, a survey of when we can meet for our board goals for that time? Okay. I will reach out to everybody and see what appropriate time that everybody can meet. And then I'll reach out to Patricia Reese and see what appropriate time she can meet. And based on, you know, it's mutual convenience, we'll set something up. But it will be a special board meeting based purely on the board goals so that we can focus purely on that and have nothing else in the agenda. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Any other business? So if there's no more new, new business. I do have a point, sort of going back to my favorite busing topic for the day, I guess. <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to understand the decision-making process and how do we get to something that doesn't necessarily impact what seems like one school, children in one school. And if you've been on, plain feel in the mornings, it's it's not pretty. So I'm curious, maybe through the finance committee, but at some point, you know, we need to look at this with more urgency than what we had initially anticipated. You know, when we did the budget planning, we had made certain assumptions. Some of them are not, you know, falling in place as we had thought. So I'm curious how we want to deal with this, right? It's a fact. We've told parents and obviously it's like less than a month uh, before school starts. Beyond just the inconvenience, it just 
I think the sense that I'm get, getting just talking to people, reading the emails is there is this sense of uh, there are some favored students, families, call it what you may, the people that are paying the money, you know, nobody seems to be caring about them. And I think we we shouldn't, I would not want us to, you know, even the perception that there is something like that, right? Because that's not our goal. That's not our intention. So I, I don't know what's the, the first step to doing that, but I think we need to kind of push that issue, expedite, you know, better than what we had thought before. Um, do you want to, I was going to speak, but do you want to speak? Go ahead. You're not on. Sorry. This may also go back to something someone else said as well. My understanding, I believe, from one of the committee meetings, finance committee meetings, was the timing was such that people who uh, had wanted to or attempted to sign up tentatively for subscription busing had done so got a tentative warning letter it sort of depended on whether we had the capacity or not and then followed so they had the warning and then more recently there was then the follow-up communication that confirmed we unfortunately as as we thought did not have the capacity so i think the idea was that they had a chance to be mindful and speaking of communication and the busing i think that was actually the reason as far as my perception is um, in the case of subscript in uh, courtesy busing, I don't. I think it would have suddenly been pulled for them from them without warning. In that case, which is, I think, the reason why the difference between and in terms of favoring, if I were just looking at this objectively, I would think we're favoring. We would be more likely to do something to favor the people who are paying if we're trying to do, favor anyone. So if we're not favoring those people it's probably not the case that we're favoring but i think that's where the disconnect is and it it's it's you can call it perception you can call it whatever i'm just just speaking from what i have heard firsthand right you everybody now in the district is aware that there is a group of parents families that are getting this service for free there is no uh, stated criteria or reason right, right? it's you you right. get the point there is yeah. no criteria established. There is nothing. Right. On the other hand, there are parents who raise their hand and said, I'm willing to give you a thousand dollars. Please have the service ready for my kid because I really need it. And now, you know, I understand the reality of the driver and whatnot, but it just seems like we are not doing enough for the other people who are impacted and that sort of going back to the whole inequity argument, this is a glaring example. I'm just trying, and I know it's a problem. I know, you know, getting drivers isn't easy. I'm just asking, you know, ourselves as a board, what can we do better? Sorry. And I, I understand what you're saying, and I do. Um, but I think the courtesy busing is part of a bigger, bigger picture, which is, what we've discussed in finance committee meetings. We've discussed we need to, to do this. We're all very aware of it, and it was a big discussion during the budget season. So we are aware, but I think it's part of a bigger picture that we need to do, dive into more depth. We, we want to make sure that we do it properly this time. I think Robert made a comment at the last meeting saying, we don't want to do it just for the sake of doing it. We want to make sure we do it properly, and that that's the plan. And so, And we we do have we, – we're, we're in – a situation right now where we have an interim BA. So, you know, we have to also be mindful that when we get, these are discussions that need to be had with the new BA when we can bring somebody on board and this plan needs to get set into motion. And although it's not official, I've, I've discussed and raised some issues on which, how we can get some, assuming we do continue at all with courtesy busing, what would be objective criteria so that there yeah. is equity and that was discussed. Is it a plan? Is it in writing? No. But discussions have continued. Budget season's upon us. That is is when it will be figured out for sure. Is well, in my budget mind. Season. Before, right. I know right. transportation said it was like, get past the first couple of weeks of this school on. year. I said, from my during the meeting, it was my understanding after we get through the first couple of weeks of school when busing is a little hectic, 
then that's like all in to be able to finalize what's the, you know, what's courtesy, what is the pot? Like, I don't even want to use the wrong words because what's the right way to put forth criteria for it. And that's what was committed to by transportation. And that would be brought to. And I think one of the other things that was discussed if I, was that when we do it, we don't want to do it over the summer when you're not getting a true interpretation of traffic and all that stuff. So these are things that are going to need to happen during the course of the school year so that when we can figure this all out. That was something that was discussed as and well. And preparation, for, and preparation the budget, for, for, the budget. for the budget as well. So, you know, these these were definitely, and I understand where you're coming from, but these are things we need to look into in more depth and do it properly. Angela? Okay, I'm bothered by something. I uh, hope somebody can clear this up. We were told there were 200 courtesy busing students. And then the district reported a different number, 337 to the state. Could we get even an accurate number? How many are there? Surely the finance committee must have that number. Surely well, as part of your investigation. What? I thought you talked about this in finance, right? You must have gotten some numbers about what the, I mean, if you're researching a problem, you got to have some numbers. How many students are we transporting? Is it 200 or is it 337 or is it something else? If you want us to just give you a yeah. number and not want accurate information, no, I can throw I a want, number out. I want accurate but I think the reality is we need to get the correct yeah. information from All the right. transport could donate. All right. Could we get and we can them. give it to you. Could but we get we're not just gonna throw out a number just to say no, your no, question. I wouldn't be prepared for just being hit and by a random number. Different. Let me ask a specific thing. What I'd like to know is how many courtesy busing students to each school. We have six buildings. How many are being courtesy bus to each school? Could we get that for next time? What? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've already had this conversation with Kelly, and if yeah. we can let her get past building all the routes and doing all of those things which impact children, let's do that first. Let's make sure the children are handled first, and then we will satisfy your um, requirements. Okay. Any, no more new business? No? Okay, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh. Aye. Aye.